I could go make myself a sandwich while I'm waiting for this to finish. This is way smaller. Pretty good, actually. Wow, it flew off. Now this is kind of a best case scenario. This is how I remember it. It's kind of bouncing around in these. Welcome back everybody. Today I'm taking a look at a website called Timu, which has been advertising all over the place. Perhaps you've seen it. It's kind of like a wish.com or AliExpress where they offer some really cheap items. And by cheap, I mean price and maybe quality too. But I went on the website for the first time and ordered the first nine items that they recommended. And I placed my order on December 17th that arrived 10 days later. And I'm gonna find out today how many of those nine items are deals and how many are duds. They they currently have free shipping. I don't know if that's temporary or permanent, but I didn't pay any shipping on my order. So all these nine items were $48.58, including sales tax, so that seems pretty cheap. But cheap doesn't matter if it's not good, right? So let me show you how the package looked when it arrived and then get started. Let's crack it open and see what's in there. I'm supposed to have nine things. Let's see. I'm just gonna reach in here and grab something out. What do we have here? These are sunglasses, which I believe I paid $2.98 for these. Let's see what they look like. All right, you know what, $2.98, not bad. They're even kind of metal feeling frames. See how these look, kind of a greenish tint. These will be easy to test out. Next thing in here, we have a rechargeable headlamp. I paid $3.98 for this. It's like a, some minor assembly required. Uh, it's kind of cheap feeling, not gonna lie, but that doesn't mean it won't work. Item number three, let's see what we got here. And we have a flashlight. I paid $3.98 for this. It's already opened. Let's see what we got. It looked a lot bigger in the, in the photo. It looked like it was massive in the, in the picture. Very cheap feeling body. Everything's cheap. It just feels cheap in general, but it was only four bucks. Just because it feels cheap doesn't mean it's not worth the price. Oh, I've even got, I've even got power in here. But four bucks, maybe it's worth it. Item number four. Oh, this is the big one. This is a pair of shoes. I paid $9.98 for this. This is, the, this is the one of two $10 items here. I mean, I will say they look like the photo. Well, there's a very strong smell coming off there. Wow, that's a that's not a good smell. It's like a very strong chemical smell. I'm gonna let these air out for a day because they just smell really strong. All right, next up, what do we got here? This looks like the kitchen thermometer that I ordered. This was a whopping $1.98. I'm gonna put this up against my chef's temp and see how it works. For two bucks, it, maybe it'd be a great deal. Next up. Oh, this one will be interesting. This is a video game system. This is also $9.98, 10 bucks for a game system. There was an extra controller. I think without the controller it was even cheaper. So we've got this controller, we've got the game system. We've even got the RCA connectors, USB cable, we're, we're set. And instructions, it's got, it's, if it has one game that works, it's probably worth 10 bucks. We still got more in here. What is this? What is this? Oh, this is a eight and a half inch LCD writing tablet. I only paid $4.98 for this. It seems very thin. It feels considerably cheaper than I thought it was going to. And there, there's a pen of some sort here. So, wow, is that thin? That is very thin. Oh, you just write on like that? Okay, it's like that. So how do you, how do you erase it? Well, I'll have to uh, figure this out. I mean, I can, I can write on it for sure, but I don't know how to erase it. We still have more to go. What have we here? Oh, this is a, a bottle opener. This is like the, the pop the top opener, but this is only $3.98, so very cheap. It looks like kind of a knockoff of that one, but does it work? That's the question. I'm gonna put this head to head against the pop the top, see how it does. I think this is the last item here. I don't remember what this was. This is, what is this? I don't remember what I ordered here. Oh, this is supposed to be a solar light. Wow, this looks smaller than the photo. The photo makes them look huge. Literally on the photo that makes them look that big. Wow, that's kind of deceptive, but hey, maybe it'll work, right? I gotta find a good place for this and, and uh, see how it looks. It's very small, but that doesn't mean it won't work, right? And for this one, I paid $2.98. Let's start with the cheapest of the bunch, and that is this $1.98 thermometer. Now I compared it against my $70 Chef's Temp Final Touch X10, and here's how that went. Take a look at the controls here. You have on off, very simple, very basic. Celsius or Fahrenheit, seems accurate. You have a hold button, which I guess is kind of handy. Then you have a minimum and maximum, which I don't know how to reset that. I guess you hold it down. There you go. Basic controls, but you know, decent. There is a battery in here that you have to access through this end cap right here, and it's one of these batteries that aren't always easy to find. All right, let's see how it compares. Let's first up do the chef's temp. I got some 
almost boiling water here. I've got some ice water in my circle. Let's see how the chef's temp does and then we'll compare it with the cheap Timu thermometer. Here we go. First up, chef's temp. Very quick, very quick. 193-ish in a couple seconds. Now the thermometer from Timu. Here we go. It's getting there. Well, not really. It's, it's slowly getting there. It's slowly, very slowly getting there. Well, I'm gonna say that this first test, the chef's temp is in no danger of any competition from the Timu thermometer. It's getting there, but man, it's slow. It's still going, what has it been, 30 seconds? And, it's, and it seems like it's topped here about 10 degrees shy of what the, the chef's temp was. Wow, is that slow. All right, I'm gonna say that's a loss anyways. Let's try the circle now with the ice water. First up, chef's temp. Boom, very quick, 34 degrees. Now the Timu thermometer. I think the ice might melt before it gets down to the right temperature. I could go make myself a sandwich while I'm waiting for this to finish. And I would say it's gotten close to it. All right, it's very slow, but I mean, I guess it's kind of accurate, kind of. Seems like it's more accurate on the cold than it was on the warm. I've had a lot of decent luck on Timu. I th say the thermometer, it's no competition. I would, Chef's temp is in no danger of any competition from Timu. So the thermometer does work, but it's very slow in comparison to my chef's temp. So I'm gonna say for the first item out of the gate, I'm calling this one a dud. But this is just the first item. We got a long way to go, right? Let's move on to something that fared a little bit better, and that is this $2.98 pair of sunglasses. All right, so I've been wearing these for a while. My experience has been pretty good, actually. Here's a couple scenes of me wearing these glasses around town over the past week. Now, one thing I should point out is that when I first put these on, there's kind of a greenish tint to these that reminded me a lot of another pair of sunglasses I have that were a little bit more expensive than these. Check it out. So the first thing I thought about when I put these on was that the green tint of these Timu glasses reminded me of the Ray-Ban Stories that I have, which also have a green tinted lens. And when I compare the two of them, the tint is about the same. Maybe the Ray-Bans are a tiny bit darker, but it's close. Let me show you what I'm seeing. All right, here we go. Timu on the left, Ray-Bans on the right. You can see they're not only are they a similar tint, but they're also a similar darkness. There's not a huge difference between the lenses and there's a big difference in price. Something else to consider is even though there's a lot of tech in these frames, they're still plastic. The Timu, you gotta admit, they're actually metal. So the frames feel better than these and these are way more expensive. So as you can see on the polarization cards, the Texas appear with the glasses. So they are in fact polarized. All right, so I gotta say, I've reviewed a lot of sunglasses over the years. I have a ton of sunglasses at home. And I've got to say that these frames are among the best that I've tried. Most of those frames are cheap plastic. These aren't. The lenses are okay. For the price, they're pretty good. This style may not be something that I would have picked out myself, but this was a recommended purchase uh, on Timu, so I just picked what they recommended. And maybe it's a little bit smaller than I expected, but overall, I have to say for the price, most people are going to say these glasses are pretty good. All right, so the sunglasses are definitely a deal. So we'll say Timu right now is one and one. One deal, one dud. I definitely do think these were pretty good for the price. But let's move on to the next item now. And that is the $2.98 solar light. Now this one didn't look anything like it showed in the photo. The photo showed these nice big lights above a couch that almost eclipsed the couch. What I got in person was not quite the same size. So I was already kind of disappointed out of the gate, but maybe it actually worked and redeemed itself. So let's take a look at how that went. So even though I'm mounting this perpendicular to the ground, I've got it charging at an angle, at least for the first use, to kind of get a maximum charge for it. So I'll let it charge all day and move it onto the wall at night and see how it does. Keeping in mind it's also the winter time, so the sun is not as bright this time of year, so the charge may not be as good as it would be in the summertime. All right, let's take a look at this in the dark now. I, let me turn this on and see how it looks. Okay, well, it's not real, it's not real impressive, but let me see what we got up against the wall here. I mean, I guess it looks pretty good. Let me grab the camera here. I mean, it does look it does look nice. It's just not very large. All right, so this is more of a decorative piece than a functional light, and I think it looks pretty nice. But there's a few issues to point out. Number one, if you look at the photo in the listing from where I ordered it, this is way smaller. They made it look like it was almost the size of one couch cushion. Not, it's not even close to that. Number two, because it mounts flat, it's not going to really optimally charge in the sun because it's a solar light. You usually want solar panels to be a little bit angled toward the sun. You can't do that with this one. 
Number three, also because it mounts only with screws, I don't really want to put screw holes in my cinder block or the stucco in my house. So in my case, I'm kind of limited where I can put this. Right now I've got it mounted with double-sided tape, but that's not going to last long. I could put it on the eve of my house, but I don't, don't really want it there. And you'll also notice in their listing, they show it on an outdoor wall that looks like it's drywall. It's not a cinder block or stucco. It's only six o'clock now, so we'll see in a couple hours if it's still going. I don't think there's a light sensor in here either, because like if I shine my flashlight in here, it doesn't go off. It's still on. It's, uh, it's, it's not going off. So you're going to have to manually turn this on and off when you want to use it. So I don't know. I think it looks nice, but other than that, I'm not too impressed. We'll also see how long this lasts. I'll come, it's only six o'clock right now. I'll come out later tonight and see if it's still going, maybe in about three or four hours. Does it last all night? We shall see. I came out here at the three hour mark. It was still on at the four hour mark, no longer on. So somewhere between three and four hours. I, I guess that's good. I don't know. So even though I like the way that light looks, I'm going to say that the design features put this one in the dud column. Not only is it much smaller than they show in the photos, but you have to turn on manually on or off. The panel doesn't angle, so it doesn't optimally charge. I think a couple small design features like putting the panel on a hinge, adding a light sensor, it'd be much better. But as is, definitely a dud. So right now we've got one deal and two duds, but let's see if this $3.98 bottle opener can even the score with Timu. I compared it to the very similar pop the top that I reviewed a couple years ago, and here's what happened. All right, this one's going to be easy. This is the bottle opener. It feels much cheaper than the pop the top that I have. That doesn't mean it won't work though, right? They look similar, but they're not the same. The pop the top's a little bit fatter. Looking inside of them, there is a little bit of a difference. The mechanism is similar, but not identical. It looks like it's a little bit of a variation in some of the, uh, the, the manufacturing. All right, so what I've got here is a pretty simple test. Should be pretty easy to test this out, right? I've got six Coke bottles on this side, six on this side. They're each gonna open up all six and see how they do. The pop the top I've used a lot. It works quite well for this kind of thing. The newcomer from Timu, we shall see about that. Let's do pop the top first as a sort of control test. All right, here we go. I've got six bottles right here. I've got my pop the top. Let's do it. And start the clock. Eleven point nine seconds. Not too bad. I even kind of struggled a little bit on a couple of those. I didn't push down quite hard enough. All right, so less than two seconds per bottle. Pretty good for the pop the top, and I didn't even do them perfect. A couple of them I messed up on. Let's see how the Timu version does. Here we go once again and start the clock. Uh oh, okay. Wow, it flew off. Oh, it's sticking to him. I didn't know it was magnetic. Oh, wow, okay. That was a little bit different. I didn't know this was mag magnetic. It kind of threw me off a little bit, but you know what though? Forget about the time. It was very close and it worked pretty well. It might be cheaper. I don't know if it's going to last as long, but for that particular case, it did pretty well. I like the fact that the cap stayed on there. The pop the top is not magnetic. This one is. I think this one even has a little one better feature. That's shocking. All right, I'm going to say it's, it's roughly a tie, but as much as I hate to admit it, I kind of like the magnetic feature on this one. So as cheap as this is, it worked very well. I have nothing else to say about it. All right, so the bottle opener worked. I'm gonna say Timu's back to 500, two deals, two duds. But let's move on to a couple of $3.98 lights. We've got a flashlight and a headlight here. I tested these out at the same time, and here's how that went. Let's take a close look at this flashlight, shall we? It feels pretty cheap overall, just cheap plastic. There's a power button here that toggles through the different modes. This is for the lantern mode, I believe. And over here, you plug in for the USB charging. That's it. So let's hit the first one. By the way, there is a strobe feature, so beware of a strobe coming up. So toggling through, we have high, low, strobe, and lantern. But I'll take this out back and have a little bit better look at it in the dark. Let's compare these flashlights. This is the X-Torch, which is 400 lumens. Now the Timu flashlight, which was only a couple bucks, they look pretty close. I mean, it's a wider, bluer light than the X-Torch, but brightness, pretty close. It really isn't, isn't that bad of a flashlight. It's pretty wide and it's, it's bright enough. That's the lower one. Lower is actually not that bad either. Then you have the lantern mode. All right, taking a look at this as just a regular flashlight, everyday flashlight. Hey, Bailey. It does, it does light up the yard pretty well. I think for the price, not too bad. It's kind of fat in your hand which isn't, doesn't bother me. Some people don't like their real fat flashlights. It is kind of fat. I think it does a pretty good job of lighting up the entire yard. It's got a pretty good range on it. I mean, it doesn't last a long time. Battery life isn't great, but it is rechargeable. So I don't know. I've paid a lot more for not much better. 
Where'd Belly go? Oh, she's hiding back there. Oh, you, what are you hiding back there for? What do you see? You see a lizard? Lighten up my, my chimney. Lighten up my air conditioner. Yes, our air conditioners are on the roof here in Vegas. That's how, it works. That's how it goes. Let's move on to the headlight now. Not much to really know on this one. We have the charging port right there and the power button that also cycles through different modes. And then once again, there's a strobe on this one, so be careful. The strap was pretty easy to install. So let me go through the modes here. This is the first button. Looks like just the center light is on. After two presses, all but the center light on. Three presses, they're all on. Strobe and then off. How stylish is this now? There we go. Kind of cool. Now, I was a big fan of the uh, atomic beam headlight back in the day. It wasn't real popular, but I really liked it. That one's gotten kind of old, so maybe this will be my replacement for it. This wasn't very expensive either. Let's take this outside and see how it looks. All right, here's the first mode, which is just the, the center larger light. Compared to the, uh, the flashlight from them, it's definitely not as bright. Now, here's the mode with the four outer lights and not the inner light. Again, not quite as bright as the regular flashlight. Now here's all the lights, all five lights, and that's pretty com close to the flashlight. So I would say it's probably around four or 500 lumens. You can actually adjust it with this hinge right here. So honestly, for the price, not that bad really. Wow, I just realized how good this lens is for, for low light, wow. All right, I've got both the flashlight and the headlight on the table here. I've got my stopwatch going. It's been going for half an hour. I'm gonna see how long each one of these lasts on a single charge, so, uh, I'll come back and let you know when either one of these dies. All right, at the three hour mark, they're pretty much completely dead by now. It's so dim, it's not really useful. So I'd say each one got about two hours of useful light and about an hour of not quite as useful light. As far as the flashlight goes, I have no complaints about it. It does feel cheap and it doesn't really last a long time in one charge, but for four bucks, it really isn't that bad. The headlight I also kind of like, even though it's a bit bulkier than the other headlamps I've had. But once again, for the price, it doesn't seem too bad. I would say both these land in the deal column, so Timu just took the lead, four to two, four deals and two duds. Can they keep the streak going? Let's find out with the $4.98 tablet. I should point out that I couldn't get this to work when I first opened it because there is a lock on the back here that will lock the erase button from not working so once you unlock the race button it does work now this is kind of a best case scenario i had my daughter try drawing something on here this is an invader sim character so this is how it looks now the observations that my daughter had was that your fingernail can actually make marks on there which it does it'd be nice if you could erase part of it instead of just all of it at once now let's uh, see a worst case scenario with someone who's not so artistic i'm going to turn over here unlock it all right press the button gone there's no getting it back once you do that. But the pen itself, it kind of feels paper-ish. I mean, not, it's kind of in between paper and a tablet. Uh, it's obviously ideal for like little kids who, who want to draw or write, but they don't, they don't, you don't want to mess a bunch of paper up. You could, I guess you could do it for shopping lists. You could do eggs. The problem though is you're going to take this to the grocery store and you're going to do that. I guess it's okay for temporary notes. Like, um, I guess you could do something like that. That might be a good use for it. I mean, it does feel very flimsy, very cheap, but you know, it does work. If I were to improve this, I would have it so you could erase part of it at one time. I would have it so that you could change the color and maybe even have it backlit so that stands out better. But for five bucks, what do you really want? It's, it's pretty good for what it is. So I would say for five bucks, I think it works. You could use just your fingernail if you wanted. You don't even need the pen for it. You can't use your finger, although if you do press on it, it does start to get these little kind of marks on there. If you get it for a kid and they, and they lose the pen, all is not lost. You can still use your fingernail. Goodbye. So I would say it has limitations, it's not perfect, but for five bucks, not that bad really. I'm a little bit on the fence about this writing tablet, but because it does work and it's pretty cheap, I'm gonna throw it in the deal column anyways. I think the usefulness is kind of limited, but it does work, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a pass. But we've got two more items, both of them the most expensive of the bunch at $9.98. Let's start with this handheld game system, which looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? I had my son help me out with this one, and here's how that went. All right, I've had a chance to sit down with this for a while. I actually had my son sit down with it for a while, so here's what we've got now first we got the on off button up here starts off you have to every time you turn on you have to choose between Chinese and English and then you have your menu here which they say 401 there are 400 games on here and you have to scroll through all the way down you can page down here which is nice there's a volume control over here because it's kind of loud okay so it's mostly in alphabetical order, but it does have a lot of the good games first, like Mario and Contra. Select that, look at this. That is it, that is exactly it. Now, if you wanna do two player, 
There is a second remote control for that, which um, I, it does work for two player, but that's the only thing it works for. I mean, this, this, is pretty, this is pretty much it. This is it. I mean, as you can see, they got tons of games in here. Let's try Donkey Kong 1. I mean, I haven't played this in forever. I mean, this is pretty much it, right? I mean, this is, this is how I remember it. So besides the 400 games on here, you can also plug it in the TV. There's a, they include a cable for that, which in fact, let me show you how it works with my son playing it through his television right here. Man, it's like I'm 13 years old seeing that. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy, Bren. Too easy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll try to go down the ladder. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if these are pirated games. I don't want to say either way, but I don't. There's no licensing information here in the instructions, so I mean, you kind of have to wonder. I'm not going to make that accusation, but yeah, I'll leave it up to you to figure that out for yourself. But as far as it working goes, it does work. It does have kind of an old school Game Boy feel to it. There are a ton of games on here. It's only 10 bucks, so, you know, I mean, proceed at your own caution, but I think that for what it's supposed to be, it does pretty well. Uh, the one big con that my son uh, noticed is that it doesn't seem like it saved games. Like, he was playing a bunch of games. He'd go back into it. There's no high score listed, so it doesn't seem like they are saved, at least on, on the games that he tried. Maybe, maybe some games do and some games don't, but that's uh, the only real con I found, besides the fact that I'm not sure if these are actually licensed, See right here, I played, a, I played a quick round of Joust. I came back into the game, no high score. So it does not save your high scores on some of the games. Maybe on some it does, but this one doesn't. Kind of a bummer. If you want to try to beat your high score, you can't. Even though there's no save game data that we could find, I'm still going to call this one a deal. 10 bucks for 400 games, that seems like a pretty good deal. Although I'm not sure what's up with the licensing, if any exists at all. But that puts Teemo at six deals versus two duds. And we got one more item, which I'm wearing right now. That's a pair of tennis shoes I paid just under 10 bucks for, and here's how that went. All right, the shoes are out of the garage. The smell is mostly gone. I'm gonna put these on and see how they feel. All right, let's try these $10 Timu shoes now. The, the soles feel pretty good. This part feels pretty cheap, but uh, you never know, I guess, right? All right, so I wear a size 10 and a half or 11. It seems about accurate. Size seems okay. They, f they feel kind of comfortable. Let me stand up. I mean, just standing in them, they don't feel so bad. There's not a lot of arch support, a little bit. The rest of the shoe feels a bit cheap, but you know, for 10 bucks, maybe it's not so bad. How do they look? Not terrible? Well, all right, well, let's try these out. All right, I'm just kind of bouncing around on these. On first use, they feel pretty nice. But one use isn't really gonna do it, right? So I've gotta head out, I gotta go to dinner, I'm going to a basketball game, be walking a lot. I'm gonna try them out and see how they do for a full day out. I might regret it, but hey, it's the only way I'm gonna find out, right? So I'm gonna head out for a while and let you know tomorrow how they held up after one long day out. All right, so I've been wearing these shoes for over a week now. It's the only pair of shoes I've worn out of the house. I've taken them everywhere. Here's a few scenes from where I've gone in these shoes. What's funny is I met a friend of mine at the hockey game on New Year's Eve and when I walked up to him, the first thing he said was, hey, nice shoes. I guess they look pretty nice. I don't, I didn't really think that much about them. I mean, they're not real heavy duty shoes and the only problem I have when there's, there's almost no arch, I'd probably get some inserts in there. There's a small arch, not very much. But for the price, even with a pair of inserts, it'd probably be cheaper than the shoes that I normally wear. So I have to admit for 10 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Now I'm not gonna say they're the most high quality shoes I've ever worn, but they are durable enough to wear on a pretty much daily basis so far. I kind of like how light they are. They don't feel real heavy when I walk around. They almost feel like slippers sometimes. Now, how long will these last? I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna keep wearing them. I'll let you know. But overall, I do think that these are a pretty good deal. So the final score is an impressive seven deals and two duds, although I think some of those deals are kind of on the border. But I still think I came out ahead for only 50 bucks for nine products. But I should point out that a lot of these products on Timu seem to have a ton more reviews than their Amazon counterparts do that have been around for years. I don't really trust the reviews and the ratings on Timu at all, so I would just take those with a grain of salt. Also, I went back and checked and every single product that I ordered now has a different price than when I ordered it. Most of them more expensive, although a couple of them are cheaper. In fact, over here is a quick graph of all the price changes from December 17 until now. 
and how the prices have changed. And of course, my two favorites, the sunglasses and the shoes, went up in price. Overall, I'm gonna say it's a pretty fun site and there are some deals to be had there, but just remember that there's gonna be some duds in the bunch. I wouldn't trust the reviews on there and I would keep my expectations very low. I would say with seven deals and two duds, I'm pretty happy with my experience there. But no doubt if you use Timu, your experience will certainly vary from mine. But if you've used Timu, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.